Today on the Canadian Way, the 2021 GMC Sierra Elevation Duramax. The Sierra Leone is a country who is located in the western part of Africa. Bonjour, hi. I'm, I'm here. Woo! Halloween. <laughs> oh, I hate my life. I've borrowed this truck from one of our viewers. So, the GMC Sierra arrived on the Canadian market in 1936. Actually, it wasn't the Sierra, it was a Silverado, which is like the same thing, but it's not the same thing, but it is the same thing, but it's not, but it is the same. It's, it's, it's the same mechanic, but it's not the same interior, but it's kind of the same interior, but not exactly the same, because some trim are different, but... Anyway. It arrived in 1936. This is the I don't know which one generation because I'm so deep in the forest that I don't have my notes. They are on the internet and the internet is unavailable here. So I think it's from Mary, I think it's the 12th generation uh, GMC Sierra that start in 2020. This is a 2021. It's actually brand new. Well, it has 10,000 km, but uh, it's it's kind of young and it started at around $32,000. So this is the latest generation of the Sierra that began in 2020. Base price is around $32,000, but this is for like a rear wheel drive, two door, four cylinder pickup. Over here, we have the elevation trim level, which started at $52,000. And this is the mid trim. It's not even the fully load. Plus, this one has the Duramax turbo diesel engine, which raised the price to $60,000. And you can add an option, and there's higher trim. These trucks start to be really, really expensive. So today, I'm going to show you all of the feature of the new Sierra 1500 and show you where it belongs on the Canadian scale. I'm also going to show you all of the feature it has to attract women. Because this is the number one mission of a pickup truck, attracting women. Not working. <laughs> so like every pickup, the new Sierra look muscular. First up, it's very big. I mean, I don't want to be hit by a pickup like this. I mean, look, look what would have been the result. Instantaneous death. To me, the Sierra look better than the Silverado. In the front, you have these really nice headlights with LED projector that look really nice and give a softer side to the truck. You also have your fog over here, which are pretty high. You know what it means? It won't get broke in the winter. And you have a massive but gigantic front grille with tow hook to hold because towing is a thing with that truck. On the side profile, you have first, written in the headlight, Sierra, but you also have quite a badge to brag about, Duramax. That's how long I perform in the bed. And Elevation, that's the name I give to my morning wood. You also have black plastic mirror, which is a weird selection at $60,000. I would have expected to have color match uh, mirror at that price. And you have some fender made of, made of heavy duty plastic, which will protect your paint from rusting. But again, they're not color match, which is again, really weird at $60,000. To gear more manliness to this truck, you also have the antenna right there. Why? <laughs> As you can see here, this is a crew max cab with a five and a half foot long bed. And again, you have these uh, fender protector that are not color match around your, your fender in the back. You also have in the rear a four x four logo to show how deep you're ready to go. In the rear, you have a four wheeler coming. Be careful, that's another Canadian animal. Watch yourself. Four wheeler is a Canadian animal that live near the forest and attack pedestrian like me if they're not careful. Always be careful for these Canadian four-wheeler. The rear of the GMC Sierra is very clean and there's not much to talk about uh, in terms of design. It looks like a pickup. 
One really nice thing about the uh, Sierra is those bump bumper step in the rear. Instead of having a step that deploy like the uh, Ram 1500, all you have to do is put your foot and you can climb. Hallelujah. But in around 2010, Ford launched a ton of equipment and create a war in the pickup segment. It's called the war of how to get in a bed in the most complicated fashion ever. So, over here, we have a staircase integrated into this bed. So there's two ways to open the tailgate on that truck. First off, but first you need to deploy the special box we have here. First off, you got a bottom on the key fob, or the second way is to press on the bottom over here. And I did it wrong because there's two bottoms. The second way is to press on the bottom over here. And as you can see, the tailgate doesn't fall down because it's not a Ford. Let's say I want to grab the lighter over here. It's very simple because normally when you bring stuff and you pick up, it's big stuff so you can reach it easily. But let's say you have to get in, the, in your truck. Well, you have a bottom over here that I need to find. Useless. Oh yeah, and then I need to press here and I deploy the staircase and then I can deploy the ramp and I'm ready to go, look, yes, and I can climb in easily. Uh, this step is rated at 375 pounds, so if you want to go in the snip park and bring your chicks in the back of your truck, make sure she weighs less than 375 pounds. Or, check this out, Jim never thought about that. I got another way to get in the bed, check this out. You ready? It is four times shorter to get in this way. Otherwise, in the bed of the, of the GMC, you got LED everywhere, but you need to get in the front to open the light. You can't just press on a bottom over here. You have to go in the front, which is not cool. In the rear of the Sierra Morningwood, the door opened pretty wide. Actually, the floor is kind of low. It's very easy. The seat is at its backup maximum position, and like every Crew Max truck, there's a lot, a lot of leg room. Really impressive. And uh, the seats are comfortable, and I got a ton of headroom too. Really nice place to sit. In the rear of the uh, GMC Sierra, you have some climate vents with power outlets, but again, no 120 volt power outlet. You also have couples there in your door, but there's not much. Getting in the front seat of the GMC Sierra Elevation. Access is easy, driving position is good, seats are comfortable. Very, not much to say, driving position is good. The presentation in the Sierra is a bit outdated. It was good like five years ago, but nowadays it's outdated. And uh, luckily in 2022, they're gonna correct that with a brand new interior. As for the build quality, it's average. Like every pickup, let's talk cup holder. You got two in the door, two in the middle, and two in the other door. Six cup holder, cause we want to bring our beer to work. Beginning the interior with that door panel over here. The build quality is okay. You got some simulator over here. You got fake wood, which is kind of nice. It looked cool. And you have fake aluminum here. And uh, the door switch uh, for $60,000. They're not really that nice. I mean, they're straight out of a Chevy Cruze. Here you have your driving mode selector. You can put it in sports. Why do you have a sport mode? Why do you have a sport mode on a pickup? You can put it in normal mode or off-road. You can also put your four-wheel drive system in auto. And it's gonna send the power it needs to the front wheel. You have low mode here, but they didn't write low, so you're like, 
well. The cluster look really nice. Uh, you have all the gauge you need to work hard, but you got a little screen and this screen doesn't show much. I mean, don't have your uh, navigation or anything in it. You all you have your it's your fuel economy and uh, your average speed and not a lot of stuff. It's really sad for a brand new vehicle to have this low of function in the cluster. Normally you have a lot more. It's like a basic Civic. On the steering, you have your heated steering wheel, your cruise control, which is not adaptive at $60,000. You also have your Bluetooth control and all the stuff you need to control your little screen in the cluster. You have a column shifter that a lot of people are going to criticize for being old school, but it liberates a ton of space and it works really great. I mean, column shifter is life. The infotainment system is very nice, very simple. You got your audio, phone, and everything. You have a bottom over here for it says Feu de Remorquage in French. It's for your trailer light. You press on that and it activates the, the light on your trailer. So you can see if there's one burn and it's perfect to do your inspection before you start working with the truck. Really good idea, GM. In the infotainment system, you have here in the second page, a thing called that says camera. If you press on that and you have the options, you can have a ton of camera on your vehicle to see everywhere around your vehicle but over here you only have the backup camera and look at the resolution of that backup camera it's not that great it's like 480p i know websites that have better quality video than this you also still have onstar which is good if you have an emergency or all of that kind of stuff a really nice and easy to use uh, infotainment system Oh, and the sound system is average. Over here you have your climate control. It's all automatic and it's very easy to use. Everything is there, everything is easy. Uh, really, not much to talk about. We prefer tree knob like always, but this is a very good system. And you don't need to take out your eyes from the road a, a long time to adjust your climate control. You also have your heated seat. And as you can see, there's two switch, one for your back and one for your butt and your back. What I don't like in this truck is the center part over here. You got some really nice aluminum next to very hard plastic. It doesn't feel that great. And you see all these knobs for temperature or for your volume? They are all made in that plastic that isn't that great. Over here you have all kind of switch which are, which are very practical. You got your switch for your uh, brake hold which is pretty cool. You got a switch to lower your tailgate, your hazard, traction control off, which is essential. And you got this bottom here. When you press on it, it lowers all the window. At the same time, it's very cool, but you can't rise it using this bottom. You have to use the bottom on your door to rise up the window back. Over here, you have your trailer control and all kind of uh, port for your device. No 120 volt outlets here though. Again, surprising for a $60,000 truck. The center console isn't that roomy or practical, but there's a reason for that. It's because it's a seat. So you can sit your girlfriend next to you and have a deep conversation. Over the glove box, you have a storage space that isn't that deep or anything. I don't really know what you can put in that. Maybe one or two screwdriver. Actually compensate for the lack of space in the center console. Under the hood of the Sierra, there's five engines available. Five. You can have a four slender 2.7 liter turbo that produce 210 horsepower and 348 foot pound of torque. Pretty good number for four slender, but I don't think it's a good idea for towing. The second engine is a V6 4.2 liter that produces 185 horsepower and 305 foot-pound of torque. This engine is older than me. Uh, it's really outdated, seriously. The third engine is the most common. It's a V8 5.3 liter that produces 255 horsepower and 383 foot-pound of torque. A lot of people choose this engine. The next one 
is the best V8 in its class. It's a V8 6.2 liter that produces 420 horsepower and 460 foot pound of torque. Very, very good numbers. And lastly, you have this engine that we have here. It's a 3 liter inline six turbo diesel. That's right, turbo diesel. It produces 277 horsepower and 460 foot-pound of torque. Very good number. And all this torque is available at 1500 RPM. All these engines have three options of transmission. A six-speed automatic transmission, a eight-speed or a 10-speed, which was developed with Ford. It's also another transmission, it's called the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler is a dangerous animal in Canada. The turbo diesel is only available with the 10-speed automatic transmission. A very, very good and robust transmission. The government announced around 9.1 liter per 100 kilometer highway, 10.5 city with the turbo diesel. The owner of the truck says it's average around 9 liter per 100 kilometer, which is insane for a truck this size. It's a very, very efficient engine. There's one problem though with a diesel engine, and it's the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler is uh, an animal that live in Canada, especially in the forest, and can attack you at any moment. So I'm always ready. I'm watching it. Now he's leaving again. Sadly, new diesel are very expensive to maintain. They, all, they got all kind of anti-pollution system that make it expensive to maintain. Uh, you need to do around at least 30,000 kilometer to see uh, a point where the diesel is interesting for you. One thing I really love about this engine right now is that I see the turbo, so it's gonna be really easy to replace and everything seems to be easy to uh, maintain on that engine. The uh, Sierra has a front independent suspension with McPherson strut and a rear solid axle with leaf spring. On the engine transmission and all the jazz you can put on your truck, this truck can tow between 3,311 kilo and 5,489 kilo, which is pretty good numbers. Here with the Duramax, we can tow 3,311 kilo, which is kind of low for the power figure we have in the front. Driving the GMC Sierra Elevation Duramax. First thing, the visibility is good for everything that is far, but everything that is close, you don't see a thing. That's an issue that a lot of American truck has. Uh, the Ram has the best visibility of all American truck, followed by this, followed by the F-150. I don't know where the, my front end finish. I don't know if, I, if there's, I don't see the yellow line next to the door here uh, I mean the visibility is not that great um, the best visibility in a pickup is in the Tundra the Tundra has by far the best visibility you know you can see everything around you in the Tundra second thing notice that the sound editing is very good but not as good as the Ram the Ram, the Ram has that sound editing that is very amazing I'm gonna talk a lot about the RAM because that's the only other video you can see on the channel. For the rest, like every pickup, you completely disconnect from the road. The steering wheel gives no feedback, it's slight, but it's a bit heavier than the RAM though, and uh, it's not precise. And the agility of the uh, Sierra for tight maneuver is very poor. I was in that tight sparking spot earlier and the truck didn't handle it that well plus you don't see a thing so the visibility is one of the most important part in uh, in tight agility tests and this truck fell uh, cornering with the Silverado again does a nice job the suspension worked well uh, the suspension is more bouncy than the ram because it has leaf spring the, the ride quality is far from the ram same for the driving experience we are far from the ram the ram like i said is a huge step ahead and this truck 
is just proving it. Although, if I had to work with a truck all day long, I will take the Sierra over the Ram because of these leaf spring. I think the suspension with the time is gonna age a lot more better than with coil spring like the Ram. And I think that the uh, Sierra is more work oriented. Now let's talk about the drivetrain of the Sierra. The drivetrain sounds like a bus, it's funny. But it worked really great with the 10 speed automatic transmission. The 10 speed really does a good job at keeping the engine uh, out of turbo range when it could. And the result is the fuel economy. Uh, the owner of the truck, uh, the truck tell me that the best did it's 6.8 liter per 100 kilometer. It's a 1500 truck. And I look at his averaging right now, 11.3 and he tows in that 11.3. It's crazy, it's just crazy number. I'm gonna floor it. Oh, the drivetrain worked really great. The drivetrain worked really great when the turbo kicked with the 10-speed automatic transmission. Wow, got a lot of torque, the acceleration are very good, and uh, it goes, it goes. Overall, the Sierra, still over time, is a workhorse first and then an everyday vehicle and it isn't as good as the ram on the road except for fuel economy thanks to that great engine and uh, it feels outdated it's sad to say but it still is a reliable workhorse and that's why people are buying sierra and silverado yeah so charles what about the sierra uh well it's a good truck. It's reliable. It's known for its durability in the Americans because it's not the Japanese. And <laughs> it's known for its it's known for its reliability. It has a very good drivetrain. The uh, Duramax 10 speed amazing drivetrain. But uh, we it shows it's surprising that in 2 years the interior is totally outdated to the point that they're going to redo the whole interior in 2022. And in the end, $60,000 plus tax plus options for the truck I had, it's a lot of money. This truck was like a fleet truck with heated seats. Mm. Right. It has AC, heated seats, cruise control, not even adaptive, just cruise control. Not even adaptative. Not even adaptative. In the end, it's a comfortable and nice truck, but it's not a $60,000 one. Although there's one really interesting thing about the Sierra, when you think about it, it's kind of the last real American work truck you can buy. Because the F-150, uh, the five liter has all consumption issue, EcoBoost, they don't last, I'm sorry. And then you have a V6 that, I mean, it's an NA V6. What are you going to do about it? Ram is now, uh, Ram now have coil spring. So the only one left with leaf spring and a real V8 uh, is the GM. The Ram or the Sierra, which one would you took? Ram, heads down. Oh, yeah, forget it. Oh, yeah. yeah, even though uh, I would love to have the the engine of the Sierra and the Ram. Mm. Because that, that powertrain is just amazing. Is just... Yeah, but it's a it's not it's not the same Duramax. It's not a V8. It's a straight six. But mm. compared to the Eco Diesel of the Ram, which yeah. is like oh, engine out, <laughs> engine out, engine out, engine out. But uh, a part of that, the rest, the Ram dominated. Build quality, Ram. Interior, Ram. Uh, driving, Ram. Uh, no, on each point. On Ram, each point, Ram yeah. Wins. Probably uh, when you're gonna tow, the Ram is gonna squat more. It's gonna be more like this. Well, I probably, I mean, surely. But in the end, the driving is way better. It's a huge step ahead of everyone, and uh, ends down the Ram. And the Ram I had review was three grand more. And if go check out the review, compare the interior, you're gonna be like what for three grand i got twice the truck <laughs> yeah. so 
Ram ends down. For the Sierra, uh, it's not a bad vehicle. I will recommend it, but it's expensive. So it's Canadian recommend. 